I was thinking about um, Bob Kaufman's jail poems and specifically number seven. And I wanted to connect it to a tiny fragment from Joanne Kiger's poem, September. So I'll just repeat that again in case you're trying to take a look at those. So part seven of jail poems and a fragment from Kiger's poem, September, which is in Mod Pope Plus. So I was thinking about the importance of Buddhism in a lot of the materials this week. And I wondered if you saw any connections between these two poems. And I'm just going to read these tiny fragments, and then you can go wherever you like within these poems or any of the materials. Um, yeah, wherever you like. So I'll just read part seven of Kaufman's jail poems. Someone who I am is no one. Something I have done is nothing. Some place I have been is nowhere. I am not me. What of the answers I must find questions for? All these strange streets I must find cities for. Thank God for beatniks. And then in Joanne Kiger's poem, September, the world of transformation is real and not real, but trusting. And then a little later down, well, I am not myself. So, so the, the invitation is any, any connections, contradictions, observations with thinking of these two poems together or or Buddhism in any of the materials in this week? Yeah, I definitely see a connection, and I, I love both of these poems. I think that there is a kind of beautiful irony in speaking of nothingness because it creates a paradox because there are words there and potentially a voice. But, <clears throat> but it undoes itself and connects us to really what is beyond language, that which can't be said, for which there's no vocabulary for, and also <clears throat> by being nothing, one is able to be fully present. And it seems like, especially to improvise, one can't be self-conscious. And so I see in both pieces kind of a willingness to get beyond the self. I have no words, Jason. <laughs> I just want to repeat your words. Voice undoes itself. By being nothing, one is able to be fully present. Talk about Buddhism. There we are. <laughs> Nothing and everything. Awesome. Um, Lily, we're on to you. I don't um, know anything about Buddhism, but I <coughs> find in these two um, passages that you pointed us to, Lainey, a relationship, especially in the um, Kiger poem of a world of transformation and how there, that's almost a paradox. Like, to have this named place that exists that we live on, but it's like a contained globe in a world, but it's full of things that are constantly transforming and changing, um, shifting. And I really get that from the Kaufman poem as well, almost like as soon as he's got a handle on something, it's shifted, like someone who I am is has shifted to no one. Something I have done has shifted to nothing. Um, I stepped onto the street, but I lost the name for the city, um, et cetera. So I think that both poets have an interesting way of approaching that, I think, very common feeling of um, 
the ground shifting underneath you and it goes along with a, f a fragmented form as well that we don't see in every single beat poem this week so that's a cool connection as well that phrase of the 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 ground shifting beneath us is really jumping out at me in your comment and um it makes me think about how you know reality is not what we think is we could say that's buddhist but we could also say that it's beat right like everything is is ripping a hole in the surface of reality like howl right is trying to pierce through um superficial or, or understandings of the world that we take for granted that aren't necessarily true so and and also like altered consciousness of the speaker like looking out onto the world and kind of seeing a truth or i don't know some some position that a speaker has that allows them to see that through that thing that's been pierced or altered yeah like all these strange streets i must find cities for nice. it, it causes us to reimagine where we are and what our surroundings are and how we understand our place in whatever those surroundings are awesome thank you lily erica what would you like to add or ask here I'm thinking about attentiveness as being something also that joins these poems and questioning. And I wanted to, instead of really commenting, I immediately found myself thinking about um, an, an excerpt from an essay by Ann Waldman, but maybe it's a poem too. I'm not sure how to, what to call it called Outrider. And she's, she's talking about, um, her poetics, but also a certain poetic ethos that she's connecting with Ginsburg and with um, the Jack Kerouac School at Naropa University. So here's something that I think also applies to everything we've been talking about with the Kaufman and the Kiger. So Waldman says, um, wild mind, elegantly self-disciplined. Anne was also Buddhist, so there there is this Buddhist element that permeates Anne's work. And what she's doing in this Outrider piece is, is saying something about beat writing and Buddhism, I think, and also about um, pedagogy and poetic communication that I just immediately was associating with the two poems that we're looking at.